Tissot Rosales steps up to the ball, eyes his shot. He's one stroke off the lead, and it comes down to this hole for the championship. <laughs> Hey, Archbishop Hebda. Hi, Tisok. Seems like you have a pretty difficult lie there. Yeah, it's not my best. I don't know how I'm going to hit it out of this one. Might I suggest a five iron? Maybe you could hit it under the tree and then onto the fairway. I was thinking the same thing, but it's good to have some reassurance. Great All shot. Right. Tisok, your mission at CSAF is kind of like a caddy who is assisting the church with the best shot. In golf, the focus is to get the ball in the cup while avoiding anything that slows you down. In a similar way, CSAF is striving to do the same with our gifts to the church. But instead of the ball in the cup, your goal is to make Jesus known and loved within our archdiocese through financial gifts and service of the church. That's a great point. We work hard at CSAF to help people understand how much thought goes into how we raise and distribute what God has gifted us. We give because Christ first loved us and impels us to share our gifts with others. And CSAF is here to do exactly that, to help more families give their children a life-changing Catholic education. And gifts for vocations to the priesthood to flourish. To strengthen the faith for young and old. For more moms and families to choose life and get the help that they need. Giving to CSAF allows people to help make Jesus known and loved by supporting the work of multiple Catholic ministries. Giving is faith in action. Yes, and we do it because the love of Christ impels us to. And if we do that, that's a hole in one. I think we could go on for golf puns for 19 holes. So do you golf much? Actually, when I was young, I felt more of a call to be a fisherman of sorts. Some people are always slowing down the game. Hey, you can give right now. Go on, you don't have to be slow like some people. Just use the camera on your phone to scan the code. It'll take you to the website where you can give. I know you can do it. Along with giving online, you can mail in your gift or fill in the envelope in your church and place it in the collection basket. Oh, oh no! no! Good morning, and welcome. Today we celebrate the seventh Sunday in Ordinary Time. The readings can be found in the Red Worship 1127. The opening hymn is also in the Red Worship 576, Canticle of the Sun, 576. Please stand.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Brothers and sisters, to prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord have, Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things, we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Time I'd like to invite forward our children who'd like to participate in the children's liturgy of the word, ages five through third grade. Lynn, receive the book of God's word. Proclaim it with our children as we will proclaim it here so that God's word will light their way and lead them with all of us to life everlasting. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, children, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit.
A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses, Speak to the whole Israelite community and tell them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You shall not bear hatred for your brother or sister in your heart. Though you may have to reprove your fellow citizen, do not incur sin because of him. Take no revenge and cherish no grudge against any of your people. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord. The psalm is in the Blue Gather 88. The Lord is kind and merciful. 8 8.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy that person. For the temple of God, which you are, is holy. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of God, for it is written, God catches the wise in their own ruses. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are vain. So let no one boast about human beings, for everything belongs to you, Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world or life or death or the present or the future. All belong to you and you to Christ and Christ to God. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, offer no resistance to one who is evil. When someone strikes you on your right cheek, turn the other one as well. If anyone wants to go to law with you over your tunic, hand over your cloak as well. Should anyone press you into service for one mile, go for two miles. Give to the one who asks of you, and do not turn your back on one who wants to borrow. You have heard that it was said, You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your heavenly Father. For he makes his sun rise on the bad and the good and causes rain to fall on the just and the unjust. For if you love those who love you, What recompense will you have? Do not the the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet your brothers only, what is unusual about that? Do not the pagans do the same? So be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. The Gospel of the Lord. We are continuing once again to listen to this beautiful Sermon on the Mount. And again, this coming week, we're going to take a little break from it as we enter into the season of Lent and then continue on into Easter after that. But we'll pick it up again after. And so now it's just a beautiful time to pick up the Bible, the Gospel of Matthew, chapters 5, 6, and 7, this homily of Jesus, his, his core teaching encourage all of us to read it during this time. It's something that that can sustain us during our season of Lent when we're actually entering into this pilgrimage journey of Lent. We're we're reminded that 
This is Jesus presenting himself as a new Moses. He is leading us into, right now, into our promised land, which is heaven. It's the, heaven is our promised land. It's where we, we're promised that we will be there. That's our, our firm hope. But Jesus here is instructing us before we get there to get those hellish things out. And now, especially in our, in our gospel today, to invite heavenly things, to embrace those heavenly things deeply, deeply, deeply. And so today in, in the gospel, we have very challenging words, probably some of the most challenging in, the gospel, in, the, in all of the gospels. But it's important to see that it is heavenly. And why is that? Because when we go to heaven, we will see God, of course. We'll see God as he is, unmitigated, to have that beatific vision. But we will also be like him. We will not be him, but we will be like him, sharing in his love, sharing his love with others. And so Jesus here, he's inviting us to do that now, to start to share his love with everyone, the way that God loves. And God is a generous lover, as we heard in the gospel today. He loves the good and the bad, the just and the unjust. It's just that for God, of course, even though he is loving perfectly, there are many people, of course, who reject his love. But that doesn't stop how much he is loving them. We see that especially, of course, of Jesus revealed on the cross. There he is loving every single one of us, pouring his life out for all of us. And of course, we know how at times we reject his love, but that eternal love remains, eternal love for each of us. Today, Jesus is inviting us to say, you, you try this eternal love thing out. You love even when it hurts. And so we, we hear these challenging words. Don't offer any resistance to anyone who is evil. Go with that person the extra mile. Turn the other cheek. Love, perhaps the most challenging one, love your enemy. But it's important to see that what Jesus is inviting us into is sharing in God's love, giving God's love, becoming like God in that way. Very challenging. In my life as a priest, I, of course, I struggle with it, and I hear all of you, I, hear, I, I know that this is one of the most challenging parts of the gospel. How can we love our enemy, this person who has hurt me, or this person who is continuing to hurt me? How do I love that person? And of course, it, because it is so challenging, we might go one direction and be so discouraged, or go another direction and just think, it's just impossible so I just won't do it. And it's important, though, to, 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 to stay in the wrestling with God because he will carry us. He will show us the way. It's important to stay there. And just a quick story around that. About 10 or 11 years ago, I was uh, a young priest and, in a way, learning how to pray over the scriptures a little bit more deeply. I had been going through a, a training program uh, training priests in how to do spiritual direction, but as a part of that, also being drawn into prayer more deeply myself. And part of what my, the mentors were reminding me and all of us is that when you pray, especially when you're praying over the scriptures, it is essential that you are honest, that you don't put on a face, don't, don't be that pious priest that you think you're supposed to be. Be who you are and be very honest with God. Okay? And it, because that's where God encounters us, is, who in, is in who we are. That's where he wants to speak. So I remember praying over this particular scripture, and we know how challenging it is. So I was listening as I was praying over it. And all of these things were arising. So, of course, it, when it says, offer no resistance to anyone, I, 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 what, what arose for me was, not that I'm just not resisting, but I'm actually... Instead of giving generously to others, I am just became very aware of all the ways that I was looking to take from other people. You know, all of this weakness, this bringing that up for me is like, 
is becoming more aware of how much I am not fulfilling this gospel. Then, of course, it goes to love your enemies. And I, all of these images of people that I had encountered the last week who, they weren't really my enemy, but they were annoying me or asking something of me. And, and all of the ways that my heart was hardened towards them and angry and a little bit bitter at times. Also, it brought all of that forward. And so, so as I continued the gospel, it just felt more and more of a burden. And then I got down to the last bit where it says, so be perfect, just as your heavenly Father is perfect. And I tell you, I wanted to take that Bible and throw it at the tabernacle, which is, of course, scandalous, so I'm sorry I said that. <laughs> But I, I just had this anger that welled up in me, like, this is ridiculous, God. How can you ask us to be perfect? You just, I just told you all of my weaknesses. You see how much I struggle with this? I, I, I don't have it. I don't have enough. How can I be perfect like this? How can I love in this way that you are commanding me? And I had this whole stream of anger that I didn't even know I had coming out at God. So after I, I, after I quieted down a little bit, I heard the Lord speak. That's sometimes what happens when we're really honest with God. It's, it opens our hearts. You know, in, the, in the pain that we might be experiencing, opens our hearts to listen a little more deeply to what God is saying. And of course, very tender. God is always tender when we're drawing closer to Him. He's so tender. And he said, this is what I, what I heard him say, in the, of course, in the very quiet of my heart. He said, you're right. You can't do it. You are a mess. And that's okay. But, but, it, but all things are possible through me and with me. And when I heard that, I, instead of being angry, I just felt this wave of consolation come over me. My heart filled with a deep peace. Of course, a lot of relief. It's like, I, I'm understood. I, okay, I, 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 that's true. I can't do this. But then in that also, I heard all of these other things, you know, the Lord filling in where the darkness was. That these, her started to hear that these commands, they're given not merely as commands, but they're given as, as the, the guarantee in a way that God will take over. And, so it, in, in affirming, it's okay if I can't because he can. And the place where I meet my can't, that's where he can take over because he really is there, really does want to live. And there's such a mystery in that. And it's, there's a wonder, but it's the truth of our Christian lives. So when we, when we see, you know, the saints doing amazing things, we wonder how in the world do they do that? Well, they did do it. But it was God who was doing it in them. It's this wonder of God's work. When he comes into us, he, he doesn't destroy us, he doesn't take over, but he does provide all things. He, he helps us to love more deeply with his love. It's, it's an invitation into deeper unity with him, and it solidifies that. But it's for us to say yes and yes more and more to him. In our second reading today, Paul is affirming that reality for us in, a, again, a very gentle way. When he looks at those he's writing to, and also, of course, to all of us, he says, do you not know that you are the temple of God, that the Holy Spirit is dwelling in you? And, of course, that the Holy Spirit is God, but in a very special way is the love of God, the eternal love of God. So that the more we give it, the more we have to give away, to give it, I mean, to give his own person. He wants to be unleashed in us more and more. And so the invitation for us again is just to say yes to it, to say yes more and more. And the more we do it, the more we'll see it. We can do it. We can love with it in a way that's was maybe perhaps unimaginable. So it's his eternal love that, that is there. So today, just very, very practically throughout this week, this is just a, an invitation for us. First is, it's always involved, it, it always involves this, this learning to love more deeply. I want to invite us to ask to receive 
God's love more profoundly. What we're doing that is we're asking for the Holy Spirit. So the prayer might sound something like this. I want to love with your love. How can I love with your love unless I know your love more deeply? Fill me with your love. So some prayer, something like that. I need to know your love more deeply. We can beg for that. And the Lord wants to, he has eternal love that he wants to give to us. And then the second part is, very simply, throughout this week, look for those places where you are right now being invited to love with God's love. Those places where you experience, you can't, but God wants to take over. Look for those. And of course, there we're invited to say yes more deeply, more forgiveness, more love, more mercy, so that heaven, God, is pouring out of us. We're entering into heaven, and, and heaven is entering more deeply into us. Stand together and proclaim our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, True God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence in our Father, we turn to him with our needs. that Christians everywhere may take Jesus' words to heart, responding to sin with mercy, hurt with charity, and hatred with love, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For world leaders, that they may turn to diplomacy and other nonviolent means to forge peace among rivals and enemies, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer, from the hurt that others have caused, that they may find the courage to accept the challenge to forgive and reconcile with those who have wronged them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died in the recent earthquake in Turkey and Syria, may they rest with God for all eternity and for comfort for their families and loved ones, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer that through our gifts of support to the Catholic Services Appeal Foundation, we will answer the call to make Jesus known and loved in helping those most in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the special intentions in our parish, for those who are sick or homebound, especially Dolores Wellens and Lorraine Biebersdorf, for those who have died, especially Kathy Harmon, Joan Toddy, and Chuck Chapleski, brother of Nick Chapleski. For the people of this parish,
for whom this holy mass is being offered, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you make the sun shine and the rain refresh all people alike. Show us all as well, shower us as well with your mercy and love. Hear this in all our prayers, through Christ our Lord. The preparatory hymn is in the Red Worship 699. Love is the law that Jesus taught. 699. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we celebrate your mysteries, O Lord, with the observance that is your due, we humbly ask that, you, that what we offer to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Oh, 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Rem remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, and now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
The communion hymn is in the Blue Gather, 597. I am the bread of life, 597.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by these mysteries, through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have our announcements. President's Day, of course, is Monday, February 20th. The parish office will be closed. There will be no daily Mass that day. Wednesday, February 22nd, this, this Wednesday is Ash Wednesday. There will be 9, 15, Mass at 9.15 a.m., and 6.30 p.m. on that day. Just a reminder, it's also a day for us for uh, fasting and, uh, for, and abstaining from meat. We also will be beginning Stations of the Cross this Friday at 7 p.m. and each Friday throughout the season of Lent. I'll have additional confession times on Sundays at 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. before each Sunday Mass. Our Lenten daily devotions are available in the gather space. Our, all are welcome to take one as you leave Mass today. Because there is a funeral this Thursday, adoration will not begin until 1 p.m. that afternoon. Our first Lenten fish dinner begins this Friday, February 4th, from 5 to 7 p.m. You can look for your dollar off coupon in today's bulletin. Our WIM group has a new date, Wednesday, March 1st and we will be welcoming speaker Kristen Tauli, who will be speaking on Unleashing the Strength of the Holy Spirit. This afternoon, we are having a Valentine Music Cafe from 5 to 7 p.m. And then finally, some of our longtime parishioners passed away this week. Kathy Harmon and Joan Toddy. So we'll pray, Kathy's funeral will be this Wednesday at noon, and jo Joan's will be on Thursday at 11 a.m. So let's pray together for the repose of their souls and also for the consolation of their family. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May they rest in peace. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We'll pray for their families. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. The closing hymn is in the Blue Gather 470, Onward to the Kingdom, 470.